Alright, so with this chapter, I definitely feel weird because on one half, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and to be honest, I enjoyed it a lot more so than I enjoyed uh, some of the past week's chapters and whatnot. I felt like I did a lot of epic things, but on the other half, as a reviewer and looking into the content, it made me question a lot of the events that took place in this chapter. Mainly one of the biggest things is when all of Naruto's friends start using the QB cloak and the chakra and making Rasengans and all that. Because first of all, to use Rasengan, doesn't it take like quite some time to actually be able to learn how to use it and whatnot? So them all using it out of nowhere is kind of like, wait, so is it because he's allowing them to do it? Is he helping them to create the Rasengan? That definitely had me like, what the fuck? 1010 10 going in with a Rasengan? And then another thing is Rock Lee using Chakra in general. It's just like, first of all, was it that he just didn't know how, so he couldn't, but he actually had the ability all along to do so? And also the fact that he's automatically using Chakra because of Naruto, then he can do Rasengan out of nowhere. When well, once again, Rasengan, I think it took, what, Jiraiya three years to learn? So it just really had me with a lot of questions as far as that aspect of the chapter goes because I understand the concept of pretty much Naruto allowing them to use his chakra and whatnot but one doing the Rasengan which is a complicated technique we've seen in the past that it takes quite a while to be able to use it and two Rock Lee using chakra in general it just all had me a bit like the logic of it is kind of you know, put into question, so to speak. I did like how Kishimoto's kind of going back to that reference in the beginning where initially the flashback happened with Kakashi and Obito, how they kind of could see through each other's eyes and whatnot. And this chapter kind of takes a step further and not only can you see through him, but he can also kind of hear. But I also have a theory on that that I'll get to a bit later. Then the daydream that Obito has of him kind of being in the leaf and it's kind of like, oh, what if I wasn't a scumbag? What if he would have came back to the village, said, fuck you to Madara, and he's like, nah, I'm gonna be a shinobi regardless. And instead of, you know, kind of attacking everybody and just being, like, pissed off about everything. He would have just said, alright, you know what? My friend died. I understand the situation. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just be, like, live, lead a normal life, you know, as normal as possible when I got white cells stuck to me. And I think that was kind of just putting together the whole concept of Naruto being able to change things once again. And it wasn't really, like, a case of talk no jutsu, so to speak. It was more so just, like, oh, we told to begin with just really didn't want to do this, but it's kind of like, I already went there, so I gotta take it all the way at this point. It's like, you know, when you do something, and you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that, but I'm already in too deep, so I'm just gonna go all the way with it. I think at this point, that's what Obito is, and him talking to Naruto all this time, the same repeated junk, is kind of just him just fighting himself, you know, the way Kakashi has been pretty much describing it throughout, you know, a lot of these chapters and whatnot, and I guess him getting that vision is him, like, after hearing all the same things from Naruto, it's like, damn, I couldn't, you know, I could have did something different, I could have did something you know, with my life instead of just being a fuckhead all these years. And that's where I think Obito got the, like, daydream from is just him thinking, why the fuck did I waste my life being an asshole and attacking the village when I could have gone, you know, at the very least I could have been like an Anbu and, you know, just have a different life, lead a different type of existence. You could definitely see that he regrets it in a big way, but at the same time, once again, it's like, I already went this far. I have to go all the way. Seeing Obito in the Hokage attire was fucking weird. I mean, really, Okage, Obito, after all we've seen, is just like, no, just stop, please. And it seems as though in the end, with the help of everybody using their magical Rasengan balls and whatnot, attacking Obito, that they slashed right through him, Naruto and Sasuke. So it makes me think, okay, is this really it? Because we've seen already a couple different instances of us thinking, oh, maybe this is finally it. They slashed through him, so... I'd imagine that this might be it, but it also comes into question, well, will the whole thing with the plant going towards the moon end? Would Obito just kind of getting fucked up? Is that, you know, going to cease to exist? Also, what's going to happen? He was using that sword, and pretty much, you know, that's the sage's sword as well. So, a lot of questions come into play, and I'm wondering, I'm kind of curious as to what if what Kakashi is seeing, and, you know, this is theory time, crazy theory, he's actually seen Obito's mind frame of like him imagining all this yes this is a crazy theory but what about if the entire world or most of the world except kakashi is already under eternal sukiyomi and kakashi the reason why he hasn't been affected by it yet is because he already was in the other dimension while this all happened and again this could be crazy or whatnot but it could be something possible and it also could explain why the fuck everyone is using rasengan and all this crazy shit maybe obito is envisioning this fight right now and everybody's actually just standing there looking at the moon and 
I think probably a lot of people will have a problem with the ending, the fact that it says something like, oh, friends defeated Obito or having friends and whatnot. Um, that was mainly just a scene because at the end of the day, it wasn't like, you know, just out the ass, like, oh, well, we're strong. And if you really look at it, it was mainly Naruto that really did most of it with Sasuke helping, of course, because it was his chakra that allowed all his friends to help break through the barriers, and then they both slashed through Obito. So I guess it's more so just the words at the end of the day, them saying, yeah, you know, it was uh, us as friends, we did it, but it really was Naruto's chakra helping mostly everyone to do it. But I still question the logistics of a lot of things that happen as far as that goes with the whole friends using the chakra, creating Rasengan's and attacking Obito, especially Lee in particular. But overall, I felt like it was a pretty good chapter. Definitely feels as though hopefully this is the end for the most part for Obito. Still leaves a lot of questions as far as certain things go, but uh, definitely seems like he might be done with and is also just wondering like, okay, is Madara going to come into the picture now? Was he waiting for them to defeat Obito so he could jump in and use the Eternal Tsukiyomi? Nonetheless, it was just Naruto basically letting his friends borrow his chakra to help out and him going up against Obito using Sasuke as well. So I give this one 7 out of 10. Aside from the questions that I have regarding, you know, just what the fuck happened with people using Rasengan out of nowhere and shit like that, that just kind of bugs me a bit, but it definitely overall seems as though they finally put down Obito with pretty much Naruto lending everyone chakra and Sasuke of course helping as well. And I don't want to cite Sasuke because he did help out, you know, it was a combination they fused in general, you know, their Suzano and QB chakra. So seems as though he's put down for the most part. He got slashed in half. If he still survives after this and we still have another five or ten chapters of Obito questioning Naruto, then I'm gonna be like what the fuck? Because it seems as though the threat has finally been ceased. But let me know what you think first of all the thing with everybody using chakra and creating rasengans and you know having the cloak and whatnot i understand them having the cloak but what do you think about them using rasengan out of nowhere also lee using chakra and then doing rasengan as well what you know what is your take on that and also do you think that obito is actually defeated after this chapter it seems so but you know there's still madara there there's still some questions so it's like what the fuck is going on? And what do you think about my theory regarding Kakashi being in the other dimension and possibly everybody already being on the Eternal Tsukiyomi? Let me know what you think in the comment section below and your overall thoughts of the chapter. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for seemingly Obito finally getting fucking cut in half because it's been a wild ride. But I think it might be finally over with this battle. I'm for that world and as always people, have an awesome day.